Hi, I'm Mark Logan and welcome to the Last Light School of Photography and today we're looking at the Easybox Quad. It, yeah, it does look like a Martian, uh, but it allows us to kind of mount and fire four flashes at once. So it's perfect if you're having to have a very, very fast recharge time or you're having to put extremes amount of power out through the gun to perhaps fight the likes of sunlight and so on kind of thing. So it is a pretty much, I think, a specialist product, but it's developed for the kind of the speed light photographers or what has become known as the strobos now. Um, so it's a great little product. I think the first thing we've got to do though, to be honest, is actually get it out of this bag and kind of build, uh, build it. And um, they've been taking the mickey out of me because they thought I couldn't build it live. So we'll, uh, we'll soon see if it all works now kind of thing. So um, you've got that kind of easy box bracket. That's the part that's going to take the soft box itself, okay? If you're not going to use the soft box, then really you don't need that on at all because it also has, as we'll see now in the second part, where the flash are attached to, you've got your brackets here um, which hold uh, the umbrella spoke. Okay, so that's where we kind of work it. So if you definitely know you're not going to use it with an easy box, then you can pretty much leave that off uh, and you'll save about two or three minutes worth of construction as you'll see now in a minute. Um, otherwise, this is just going to go straight on the top here. And then all I need to do is get the other contents out for a minute. Uh, we've got some little bits in here. We have got, of course, a tilt head, which is going to allow it to actually change its shape and angle. Then we've got two sets of cables, uh, one which is a PC jack based, oops, sorry, and the other which is what we're going to be using today is the, uh, the sink kind of going into the side of the uh, trigger. So I'm just going to leave that one back in the bag, in fact, for now. And uh, we've got to pull out our little Allen key with some screws and washers. And basically, this is where <laughs> all the crew are going, he'll never do it, he'll never do it. So let's hope I can prove them wrong. So uh, screw, then washer, Allen key, just go it in. This is all those days I spent building furniture when I first got married. I just twisting into there. Once this is together, you don't need to split it apart. The reason it comes in two halves, in fact, is A, you've got that option, as I mentioned to you already, to do with the uh, use of the umbrella or soft, uh, the softbox. Um, but it's also kind of ease of shipping and so on and probably the only time I would take this back apart again if I was going to jump on a plane I just need to actually flat pack it a little bit but it's just going to save us a, uh, an inch or two of the kind of the um, basis on that. So there's four screws to do in all. Um, as with anything don't tie, tighten them up fully always kind of get your two basic ones in so it kind of registers itself. Let's get that in there. I'm not going to tighten that fully so another two to go. Um, you might be kind of thinking what kind of use you're going to have. Well, we're going to be out photographing with one of our ballerinas today. Uh, we're going to be up at the Photo Training View Church, and we're going to kind of try and do some motion shots to actually kind of freeze that. Plus, we're also going to um, kind of do some kind of real strength, really overpowering uh, the, uh, the kind of the ambient light within the scene. It's not so hard up there because it's quite a dark kind of um, old chapel. So that's it. Doesn't take very long, as I said. And then we're pretty much ready. There we go, tight. Uh, I would keep that in the bag, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to put it back in the little plastic bag, as I do with mine. Stick it back in the bag in a minute. Next thing is going to be our little tilt head. Comes with a little adap adapter, of course, in case you don't have an extra kind of um, space on the top of your stand. But I don't need that on my stands. I've left the stand by there. <laughs> and as if by magic, a stand flies through the air. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> um, so, sorry about that one. Um, it's just going to kind of slip onto the top there. Uh, nice and tight. And remember, its job, of course, is to, as I mentioned before, tilt it. All right? We're not going to use the umbrella bracket going into here for now, even though we could. Um, those brackets are all already in the middle. Uh, can I just say at this, at this point, uh, to the team, I told you I could build it live, and I just did, all right? Um, and that's it, we're pretty much ready to go, simple really. So then we're just gonna plug in the jack into our receiver, switch it on, I've just attached a little bit of Velcro to uh, my bracket there, just so it's kind of all self-contained. Then all I need to do is just go ahead and switch on all four of the flash guns. Turn it towards the subject, and then just with our trigger, fire it, and we've got a quad firing all of those with just that one cord. Remember that's a specific made cord for the Lasolite pro product here. 
um, just allows you to just use one uh, receiver to fire all four, just allowing you to, again, carry less kit when you're going out on location with it. Um, so let's kind of um, put a softbox on it and also look how we use it with an umbrella. So let's use the uh, easy box. First of all, just slip in the uh, heads, of course. The key point is here, to be honest, is to get it onto the top kind of clip first, first of all, because that is going to take then all the, the weight, and then just put on the two sides, stretching that out, of course, just that final one, and then we're pretty much running. So that's the, just the brackets here to actually keep that pretty much uh, and safe. And then when we look around towards the front, um, the decision is then, if you imagine the diffuser is in place, we can either still direct all the flash through it to obviously if we need the more power, Remembering though, it will probably only kind of bring out about that much, it won't light the whole box, but it will be very close to it, but the intensity of the flash will always be in the middle kind of uh, element. Or of course then what we do is just tilt our um, flash heads towards the different panels. And it's just me fiddling around here. and to kind of light each of the individual panels um, so we get that little bit more of a kind of an evenness throughout the whole of the light as it comes through the diffuser. So it's a, it's a pretty cool way to actually light quite a very large softbox with a simple speed light even though there's four of them. Let's use first of all the shoot through umbrella. Um, the adapter has an 8mm and a 10mm uh, access point so just uh, put it in towards there. Helps if you look what you're doing Clegor. And then pretty much we're ready to kind of run as a big shoot, shoot through umbrella, again allowing us to work really, really fast. Um, or of course we can just swap that for a reflective. Let's push it into there, spin it around of course. Let's just then tilt our bracket upwards to give us some angle of course. And then we've got a, a quite effective way to be able to bounce a lot of power coming back and it gives us a great recharge time. There's another way to do it as well because we can re redirect the flashes through a little bit more so instead of um, just pushing it into the middle we could actually bounce these out towards the side but we can also work with perhaps uh, another umbrella as a shoot, a shoot through so let's have a look at that way. So of course then we just bring in an, uh, a shoot through again and feed that back through the other side and the benefit now, we've got a product that is very, very similar to what is another last light product called the Brolly Box. Gives a nice kind of tight light, very, very soft because the light is going into the back, of course. We've got one more option, and that's to kind of turn this bracket into a bit of a globe. Uh, it's quite familiar in the film industries for locations where they're trying to spread a lot of the light but also have a diffused light source instead of a specular one and that's going to use uh, two shoot through uh, umbrellas uh, but it means I also have to just take off um, two of these guns for a minute and of course all we're going to do is put our universal umbrella in the one side just feeding that through the bracket once more And then this is where I would just uh, remove the outer diffuser just to uh, use the shoot, the shoot through style once more. So it kind of, it might look a little bit fiddly, but in fact what we're trying to demonstrate here is the complete universal way that we can start to work with this last like product for different kind of styles, whether it's for fashion, for architecture, for move, movement, probably that's where we'd kind of use this first. Um, because we want to kind of freeze things. Um, or for the likes to try and overpower God's light with it. And if I just twist that around for a minute, you can see pretty much what we've got there. And I could just start to push those in even more to create even more of a globe to stop that kind of lighting. And if I just push that out just a little bit for a minute, I'll go in from behind so at least the camera can see what I'm doing. And then all I'm going to do is just hire this up a touch, then just slacken off my bracket perhaps, so it's just going to give me a lovely straight light on e each side. And you can imagine that now going up into a room set, giving that lovely kind of flood of light around the whole thing. And of course the benefit we've got here, perhaps we just wa we wanted a little bit of light going off in the one dire direction. Because of its design, I'll go from behind so you can see again. Um, perhaps I want some 
straight hard flash coming down towards the floor in a kind of a harsh way and you can see there we could kind of direct that light into a different direction once, once more to just change the styling of the lighting. That's all we're ever trying to do with flash is manipulate it to do what we want it to do. That's the whole point of all these flash access accessories. So a, quite a technical piece of kit but for the photographer who's trying to push flash really to the edge it's a piece of kit that will allow us to really manipulate the light to do what we want to do. So I think the best thing is we get out on location and see how it works. Ready? One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Excellent. Thank you. How cool is that? <laughs> Don't let anybody ever tell you that being a photographer isn't a cool job. Um, shooting ballerinas on, mul on multiple flash in a cool location. How awesome a job is it? Um, anyway, um, what, what we're doing, as you know, is the EasyBox uh, quad, which allows us to have the four flashes together. And to be honest, uh, I'm cheating a little bit because I put my battery packs on there just because I'm shooting all day. And uh, basically what I want to make sure is that I'm kind of running from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. But let's not forget the whole concept of that quad piece of kit is that we can put the four flashes together either to give us lots of illumination, which isn't all always the case. It is when we want to kind of get perhaps those deep blue skies and kind of overpower the f sunlight a little bit. But in this case, I want a rapid recharge so I can shoot what I'm doing is seven frames a second here. So out of that kind of leap that we just had several times out of Elena, our ballerina for the day, um, we're guaranteed to pretty much get the kind of the shot each time because we're not relying on my split second to actually press, press that button. So it's a rapid change. Just going to change the position. Um, as it was in that first setup, I've got this um, ni a 90 degree position which will give me pretty much uh, a more dramatic image as you can see from some of the stills we just did really. But really what I want to do at this point is kind of bring around the light and flatten the light a little bit, not a lot. Uh, why? Because I just want to bring perhaps a little bit more shape to her. So instead of a, ni a 90 degree, uh, degree position from where I am, I'm going to pull it back to perhaps what we prefer to as the traditional position. It's 45 degrees, just to give a little bit of illumination to the shadow side. I could be running uh, some accent lights or some secondary lights into the back of the background as well, um, but um, it just depends on the kind of style that you want to shoot. Today, I just want to shoot with the one light source to actually create the kind of the stillness and the move, uh, the movement at the same time. One, two, three, go! Excellent. And we're going to do it again. One, two, three, go! Perfect. And kind of a little bit of a swoop kind of thing towards the, the light a little bit as well. Ready? One, two, three, go. Brilliant. One, two, three, go. That was it. You got it. Do you know, it's awesome working with a professional dancer uh, who's also a model because you can pretty much get anything you want. And we've kind of uh, just stopped off on the way back to the, stu at the studio. Bit of milky blue sky there, but a bit of colour enough for us to kind of do some spring shots. And what I've done kind of to use that easy box quad again is to overpower the scene. And even though we're in the shade here, that's a bright sky up there, even though you might not be able to believe it. It's really, really bright. And what we're using here is the amount of sheer power coming out of all those four flash guns to be able to create a softness of the light, a spread of the light, and, and that's how we achieve it. You know, we've got the four heads here, each bouncing into a, diff a different panel. I could have changed these in any way I, want, I wanted to, and I would have slightly increased or changed the style. I could have even have had one point, pointing directly out to change those characteristics again kind of thing. So it's, it's a pretty cool toy, even though it is really at the kind of the more professional end as far as the, uh, uh, the flashing is concerned. But uh, really cool. Um, what I was doing then, um, uh, you saw uh, Elena kind of having a jump and so on. We're at 2.50 of a second at F13, F which is one stop darker than the main light itself. So in other words, that up there was something like uh, F9, and we've given it a full stop more here, or close to a full stop more here, with the flash to kind of start to dominate it. And if, you know what? If those had been big blue uh, kind of skies and fluffy white clouds, that photograph would have been even better again. But um, that piece of kit has pretty much performed really as I wanted it to do today, especially when we worked with it to freeze motion initially, where we rapidly shot, and now just here to get that one shot in the air. And Elena did absolutely brilliant. She gave me an extra six inches of height when I asked her to as well, and we got that final photograph. So I'm Mark Cleghorn for The Last Light School of Photography. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.